नमस्कार वैसे आज हिंदी में बोलना चाहता था पर मुझे विपक्ष हो गए आंदी में बोलना बोलने की मौका मिला So today I have to speak English. Normally I speak in Chinese, speak Chinese or speak Hindi language. But today I have to speak in English. My English is not good, but I have to. Thank you. So, Dr. Sinchan, Professor Ji, and other friends here. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to speak here about the timeless guide of Dhammaya. That is a very, very timeless topic in the world, in China too. Normally, say we have this topic to be held in our conference related to Indian studies, or South Asian studies, or Eastern literary studies in China. Every year, we have and not, uh, we have several time to discuss to, uh, on this kind of topic. So as a cultural classic of the South Asian subcontinent, Ramayana is not only a literary masterpiece and Adika uh, Avya, but also a symbol of Hindu religion, philosophy, Hindu religion, philosophy, and social governance. Transcending the limitation of time and space, it shapes idealized characters and social visions through its profound themes of moral ethics, family bonds, and social responsibility. Ramayana mirrors Indian civilization, outlines an ideal social order, and illustrates how heroes uphold justice and miss complex realities through their moral choices. As a classic, Intertwining the religious and the secular world, the influence of Dharma has grown even more significantly through cross-cultural transmission. Uh, transmission, China too has absorbed elements from this uh, uh, epic, which not only left traces in Chinese Han culture, but was also re, uh, reinterpreted and given new meaning in Chinese Shiza culture. Tibetan culture mean this cultural migration and adaptation demonstrate the openness and the flexibility of Ramayana as a classic and a worldly text. You see, my uh, writing is a little bit long. It consists of three parts. I will just reach the second and third part. So the first, well, the first part that is to say related to the translation of Ramayana and the Dham stories in China. You see, just now, uh, I'm just uh, now looking at mention, you see, in 322, 324 centuries, Dham stories were translated into Chinese language. And also, in the early 20s, Ramayana was translated into Tibetan language by Gen Zhen Chun Hei. And in the, uh, some late 20th century, Ramayana was translated into Chinese, I mean the full Ramayana by Professor Ji Zhenming. Also after that, Professor Jin Ding had translated Ramayana Manas in Chinese. So in China, we have all the Chinese, uh, Chinese language, I mean, including Tibetan language, we have Ramayana. And also in other languages, we also have Ram stories, Tai, 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 uh, Tai, Tai language. Not Thai language, it's Dai language in Chinese, and in other languages, also in Mongolian language, we also have this kind of epics, have Ram stories. So, for the first, and influence in China, for the first part, I will not read, I will just start from the second part for the sake of, uh, how to say that, uh, for the sake of uh, lack of time, right? So, the part two is about the Adarsh ideal in Ramayana. So, I will read, read this part. Ramayana is not only an epic but also a profound uh, ex uh, exposition of the ideal personality and ideal society. Through the actions in the words of Ram, as well as the establishment of Ram Raja, the epic presents multiple dimensions of concept of Adarsh in Indian culture, from individual moral cultivation to the just govern governance of society. Ramayana constructs a blueprint of an ideal society. 
intricately uh, intertwined, intertwined with the ethic, uh, ethical, political, and uh, philosophical thoughts of Indian society. The first uh, Ram as uh, a man, as a, a Dutch, an ideal, ideal man in the uh, Indian society, not, not only in ancient Indian society, but today, also today's society, right? As a core figure of Ramayana, Ram is portrayed as the embodiment of the ideal personality, encompassing the rich meaning of the concept Adarsh. Adarsh means ideal, right? In Indian culture, Adarsh signifies the perfect model, and Ram undeniably exemplifies this ideal, this Adarsh. I mean, first, Ram is the Adarsh son. You know that? Ram is the Adarsh son, right? Out of loyalty to his father, uh, the uh, uh, church, he accepts a 14 year exile without hesitation. This act demonstrates his absolute obedience to his parents' will, reflecting the uh, patriarchal ethic, um, ethics emphasized in ancient Indian society. In a traditional Indian family structure, respect and obedience from sons to their parents is a moral call. Ram's actions align with this cultural expectation, making him a model of a filial duty. In China, also the same. Some say that the sons should 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 obey their parents, right? Second, Ram is the Adarsh brother, ideal brother. His deep bond with his brother Lakshman is one of the most touching portraits of. A fraternal bond in Indian society, in Indian literature, sorry, Veda, facing the hardships of exile or fighting in battle, the relationship between Ram and Lakshma remains steadfast, exemplifying loyalty and support between brothers. He also shows affection and care for his brother Parath, despite the uh, rivalry over the throne. The uh, fraternal uh, uh, fraternal devotion not only underscores uh, moral responsibility within family, but also reflects the sanctity of kinship in Indian society. In his marriage, Ram is Adarsh has been. His loyalty and commitment to his wife, Sita, are the core virtues of his role as a husband. After Sita is kidnapped by Ravana, Ram's unvailing determination to rescue her and his relentless efforts in overcoming obstacles display his profound love for Sita. His dedication to Sita is sent to the young personal strategy and a political game, making their relationship a symbol of ideal uh, marriage within Indian culture. The relationship between Ram and Sita <coughs> epitomizes the ancient Indian ideal of monogamous marriage, of in ancient times, monogamous marriage is a kind of Adarsh, right? You know? Ram is also the Adarsh father. Upon reuniting with his sons, he treats them with equal love and affection, granting them equal inheritance and ensuring, ensuring that them happiness without any bias or reservations. Finally, as an Adarsh king, Ram's actions reveal a strong commitment to social justice and responsibility. His decision to accept exile and renounce the throne shows that he does not violate his father's promise out of personal ambition, but makes a morally sound choice between national interest and familiar duty. Such conduct reflects the high expectations of kings in ancient Indian society, where a ruler is expected not only to possess the capability to govern, but also to demonstrate exceptional person virtue and selfish, uh, selflessness. Second two, Ram Rajiv, as in Adarsh society, Ram's personal conduct represents the Adarsh person, while Ram Rajiv embodies the realization of the Adarsh society. In Ramayana, Ram Raj is not only a utopian state governed by Ram, but also represents India's ultimate vision of good governance. 
The concept of Brown Raja conveys several core elements that define an ideal society, justice, fairness, social harmony, and the well-being of the people. First, Ram Raja reflects a pursuit of good governance and the Ram's rule. The kingdom of Ayutthaya is politically well-ordered. The law is impartially enforced, and people lead prosperous, stable lives. This model of governance is not only an idealized social form in ancient India, but also reflects a deeper expectation for state governance in today's not only Indian society but other also other societies too. Ram Raja requires the king to act with fairness and selfishness, neither abusing power nor succumbing, succumbing to personal desire, but rather always placing the welfare of the people as the highest priority. Second, Ram Raja emphasizes Samajit Kriyam. Samajit Kriyam means social welfare. In this ideal society, the welfare of every member is guaranteed, with people enjoying not only material well-being, but also spiritual peace and happiness. The vision of welfare is more than an abstract political ideal, but a tangible system of social support. In Ram Raja, the king is a ruler and the protector of the people. His duty extends beyond governance to ensuring the fulfillment of each one's needs. This emphasis on collective well-being reflects the spirit of collectivism in Indian culture, where social <coughs> societal happiness stems not only from individual success, but also from collective harmony and shared prosperity. Moreover, the social structure in Ram Raja reflects a commitment to moral and ethical order in this ideal society. All social classes coexist harmoniously with each individual fulfilling their roles. The king, as an embodiment of morality and justice, ensures the fair functioning of society. This idealized social order is reflected in the impartial enforcement of laws and in the sense of responsibility and moral duty that each individual holds in this society. Individual behavior represents not only personal ethics, but also forms an internal part of the moral fabric of society. The last part. Third. The relevance of Ramayana today. In the context of globalization, Ramayana as a timeless classic continues to offer essential insights to modern society. The theme of today's seminar, Timeless Guides, actually captured this idea. Ramayana is an ancient ethic, but the, ethic, uh, but the ethics and the social ideals it embodies remain profound today. Let us think here. What consists? What constitutes timeless values? The timelessness of Ramayana lies not only in the uh, continuity of its text, but also in the universality and the uh, uh, adaptability of its moral and social ideals across different historical periods and cultural background. This epic reveals profound intellectual value, transcending cultural, religious, and temporal boundaries. In a modern context, Thomas does not indicate static, rather it refers to the ability to uphold core values amidst constantly evolving social and cultural conditions. Ram as a Thomas idol, Ram as a Thomas idol, represents personal virtue and a social responsibility that are equally applicable today. Meanwhile, Ram Raja, as an idol of Thomas Kalyana, Thomas Vaifami, offers a con comprehensive vision of fairness, justice, and well-being for contemporary governance. Ram Raja is not a hollow ideal. It is a governance model that has deeply influenced the structure of Indian society. 
In this model, the needs and interests of the people are pro, uh, are pro, right, are prioritized, uh, prioritized, and rulers are expected not only to ensure the fair enforcement of laws, but also to protect the interests of marginalized, um, sorry, margin, marginalized groups. But I'm glad it stands for a vision of collective welfare, emphasizing not only the strength and stability of the state, but also mutual support and care among members of society. Last paragraph. What does Thomas mean today we say that? I shall say, regardless of the era and the social context, the moral and the social values conveyed by Ramayana have been meaningful across all times. It is a cultural legacy of ancient India, as well as a shared wisdom of human civilization, offering valuable insights for individual conduct, social governance, and global cultural exchange today. Through this perspective, we can better understand why Ramayana continues to exert such powerful influence in the modern age, in the world, I mean, not only India, not only Southeast Asian countries, not only East countries, but also I may, may go to the West, right? Its moral, ideal, and social vision are a heritage of history and a guide to meet the challenge of the future today. Thank you so much, Jay Ram. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chang. I request Ambassador Sir to please felicitate Dr. Chang Chenghui as a token of appreciation for his contribution to today's symposium. Thank you, Jiang Boshi. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Chang to Jiang Boshi to be the award recipient. Thank you, Jiang Boshi, for his contribution to today's symposium. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Chan.